I'm John Harmon. I'm an owner of a small CPA firm here in McKinney, Texas, which is a suburb of Dallas. And, and I want to show you how I use estimates. I've been using the CERT program for 20 years, and I found some shortcuts that can save you time, and it's always saved me time, to provide what my clients need and generate them quickly. So let's get started. One of the issues that we face as preparers is trying to get the estimates to print exactly what we want them to be. I have four typical clients that come into my firm recording estimates. One that does not want any estimates no matter what they should pay. One that wants to pay a certain amount, usually around the same amount as last year. One that does not know how much extra they have to pay. And some who actually want the program to generate for them what they should be paying. And they, you know, they might need some adjustments, but they want their program to do the work for them. So they'll come around on April the 15th and be even or close to even and owing or receiving a refund. Let's we'll start with the first client that does not want any estimates is the easiest for me to satisfy. All I have to do is put a one here in the screen where it says 2010 estimated tax. Put a one. A minus one is means no estimates here. So the quick way for me to see what the estimates are going to be is look at the letter. Instead of looking at the individual options, I look at the letter. It shows all four payments at the same time. By putting in a minus one, there is no estimates being generated. There is no 1040 EFs. A solution for some clients has been to print out blank estimates and vouchers. It provides them with the flexibility they want. The quickest, the quickest way to generate blank estimates is by using option A, print blank 1040 EFs. Here, let me show you how that works. Click on the drop down box, go to option A, print blank estimates. What this will generate, it will still be on the letter, it will still be blank, there's no estimates being printed, but if you actually go look at the 1040 EFs, we'll look at just voucher number one. It has the name of the client, their address, the information here for it to, to be read by the IRS, but they can fill in the dollar amount themselves. They can write in $1,000 and then send a check in for $1,000 with this voucher. That's why they know it's going to be credited to the proper account. And all four of them will generate with blanks. Another type of client wants to pay a certain amount, usually the same as last year, without regard to what the program calculates. The quickest way here is to put in the amount for all four quarters and the total and check box to ignore refund applied. This saves you time worrying about the refund applied and trying to adjust what is being calculated. Let me show you how this works. In this particular instance, the client wants to pay $1,000 the first quarter and then $2,000 in each preceding quarter. We want to check this box in, in case a refund is being applied to the next year, which would go into this calculation. And we also want to put in a total here. So a total here is $7,000. We'll go look at a voucher. Here's voucher number two. Let's go to voucher number one. It's $1,000. But like I said earlier, the quickest way is to go look at the letter. And you see the first voucher is 1000 and the next three vouchers are 2000 each. There is the other type of client that wants their program to calculate the estimates based on their projected income. The program on, automatically generates the estimates based on their current income, but a client, will, when you're preparing a return, will tell you that their income is either going up or down. They might have lost uh, their position, which is unfortunately common uh, this last year, or they might have received a promotion and 
with increased bonuses. And these clients want to make sure when it comes to the end of the year, from April 15th of next year, they do not owe or owe much at the end of the year. The estimated tax worksheet can help you generate these estimates. The income and deductions are easy to adjust, and the program calculates the new estimates for you. First of all, we'll look at expanded method here. The wages, the A means adjust. So they take the current year taxpayer's income and wages, and the amount here will adjust it either upwards or downwards. A minus will adjust it down. The same, same way through the adjustments to income, itemized deductions, AMT, Schedule D uh, calculations. And one item I do want to point out is the taxpayer where it has a zero, it's actually an O for override. It's not a zero, it's an O for override. One of the key features I've, I've used and is invaluable to me is the filing status has changed. The individual return was a joint return and now it is a single return or the single person is now married. So here you can go in and adjust the filing status. You can go from where it's a joint return, you can change it to single, or a single return, you can change it to a joint return. You can go in now and add the new spouse's wages, their income, and generate the new estimates based on the projected income for the coming year. One of the keys, though, I, I mentioned earlier, and I want to point up again, that in the estimated options, we need to make sure the estimates are based on the 2010 tax calculation. Here, that must be either option four or seven. One of the key features of generating the estimates is called the SMART default. And from year to year, it transfers the estimates over to the program as a memo item. Let me sh I'll show you this. Go into the, in this particular case, the current year estimates. The voucher amount comes across as a memo item, and now you, you're able to put in the amount paid. It's kind of a reminder to ask a client if he paid the vouchers and how much he paid. Lots of times the client will say, well, I paid the amount that was on the voucher, but they don't know what the amount is. But here you have the memo, which is printed on the voucher, so you know how much they paid. Uh, preparers have found this functionality to be very helpful. So starting with the 2010 LACERP product, a similar feature has been added for extensions. When extension is printed using the extension-only feature in a print menu, or if the extension is electronically filed, the amount printed on the extension will be captured in the memo only field located in the estimate screen. Let me show what that looks like. Here is the pay with estimates not later than 415. Here you had to put in the amount. Now this is the new field for the 2010 program. You'll see that the amount paid and the date extension this, on this uh, example, a stitch was filed on April the 13th, 2010. The amount paid was $5,950. And now you can go in and verify and enter it as to generate into the return as part of the estimates paid on the 1040. You know, with only a few keystrokes, you know, you can generate the estimates now that the client wants and you're able to do it quickly and accurately with all the smart input and smart carryovers. Use some of these tips I've told you about, and it will save a lot of time in your practice. Thank you.